Hello, hello. This is Julia and Julia's Knitting Podcast, episode number seven, eight. I'm not sure, but I'm back and I'm very glad to see you all. It has been a while, not such a long time uh, as it was last time, but uh, longer than I thought. But that happened because I was on holiday. I took a week off. I went to my hometown. I met my family. I actually didn't do a lot of knitting, to be honest. But I'll show you everything I did. I know it sounds strange. Holiday and not knitting. Shouldn't it be the other way around? But I... I did such kind of holiday when you go to the museums all the time, walk around the city, bars in the evening. So I just had probably one chance to knit during all this time, uh, during the time of the holiday. But when I came back, I finished my doily. I started a sweater, which I'm knitting right now. Maybe that's it. But what you're gonna do? Sometimes we don't need as much as we'd love to, right? I'm sure you can relate. So the last time I showed you my doily, I showed you my finished doilies, and one of them was in progress, and now it's done. It's not too big, but you know, it's enough to cover quite a round table, um, which I unfortunately don't own. I'd love someday, I have several doilies already, and I'm kind of making them for my future home, for my future yard. So I'm hoping I have this house (laughs) that I'm dreaming about someday. And I have uh, like several not very big, but several round tables where I can place these. They're very nice. I'm showing you the wrong side. This is the wrong, the right side. They're very nice. I love that uh, it's not your very classic doily with these, with all these laces. It's kind of a, a, a double crochet uh, spaces and double crochet f- filled <laughs> with double crochet with double crochets. So as you see, there are flower motifs. The center is, uh, I guess, they are kind of leaves that lead to flowers. I guess these are roses, and the the section. Um, border is also a flower or maybe um, a twig with a leaf. It's nice. I hope I can insert some footage for you to see it in action. The pattern is... um, I can't say it's very easy, you know? When I started it, it seemed uh, well, just follow it and that's okay. It wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. But, you know, it's still just double crochets and chains. That's it. You just have to be very attentive because there are like millions of millions of crochets, millions of um, rows. So you just uh, have to keep track. Okay, the only thing that is left to do is uh, to buy a house with a yard to place it. So, that's it. Another thing, and actually the the second and the last thing, is a sweater. But I guess it's worth, it's worth it. It's worth, you know, not doing anything else this week. Uh, This is the back. As you can see, I've just started it. But the front... mm, It's called Touch My Heart Sweater. 
and as you can see it's called touch my heart because there are hearts on it i hope i'm showing you this so that you can see so there are two options five hearts or seven hearts if you are making it uh, the full length you have seven hearts if you want to make a cropped version you are making five hearts you are um, finishing like you are doing it shorter so i have a long version if i wanted to, to make it shorter i would crop the last row of hearts and they go two three two it's going to be a dropped shoulder usually i wear my size is m but i always buy l or xl because i like oversize this pattern has two sizes sm and um, lxl i'm making sm size and it's very big so i'm not sure if you are size xs s double xs I think you will have to take smaller needles and a smaller yarn. Maybe, you know, this uh, very fine mohair will be enough. I'm not sure, but just note that it's very, very big. It's supposed to be very, very big. But again, it's not available in English. So, I'm sorry. I will again put the link in in the bio it's actually the same author who who did the um, what do you call it the hood pattern from my last video she's a great designer i love her but she doesn't do english pattern patterns in english yet but if you decide uh, there is um a chart in this pattern that actually shows you um, the whole uh, front side and the back is very similar and if you decide to make it uh, I can help you text me I will help you with the translation um, and there are options to make a sweater or to make a vest and to make it long or short, as I already told you. So, I love the yarn. It's Alpaca Boucle by Drops. And it's very... You know, it, it looks a little rough. But in person, it's uh, soft. It's tender. It's very nice uh, against the skin. I hope... It's stable enough for the sweater to look nice also but it seems like it it seems like it and you know drops is a nice brand so um, I don't think I have to worry about that if I remember correctly for my size I bought uh, seven balls of the main color and one ball for the hearts and in my case as you can see it's uh, it's dark gray, well, darker gray and a lighter gray. But I've seen options where uh, people make like uh, some very calm main color, like beige or gray or black, and a very bright heart, scarlet red or yellow or something else, or both bright, you know, like orange and pink for example orange and pink or the other way around they all all the options look nice i just chose the colors that fit me the best i'm not sure i like myself wearing bright colors so i think those colors fit me better so yes um if you haven't tried the yarn yet I think I can recommend it. If you are not sure yet, wait for me to finish the sweater and wash it and uh, wear it uh, for a couple of times just to see what's what. But for now, 
I'm liking it. This is all the knitting I've made, <laughs> I've, I've done uh, during this time. But I have, I had a chance to wear uh, something that I crocheted a long time ago, actually before moving. I remember seeing this uh, picture, I, I'll try to find it, where um, I can't remember the designer who made it, but it was from the catwalk and uh, it looked, I liked it, it was love at first sight to be honest. And I just tried to eyeball it, I just uh, downloaded this, this picture, but different colors and made different um, patterns for each color. Sometimes I repeated them, sometimes, well, I can't remember, maybe five or seven patterns are uh, in this, um, I don't know what to call it, t-shirt. And it's just uh, a rectangle. And uh, <clears throat> the collar, the uh, armholes and the hem are somehow decorated. I think they are crochet shells, double crochet shells. So I have been wearing this t-shirt quite a lot. It's cotton, it's, um, it has this quite uh, impressive holes in it. So you can feel the wind, the air, on your skin when you're wearing it. It makes it a nice uh, summer piece of clothing because even when it's... the yarn I chose it's, is quite thick but even so the holes are big enough to feel quite cool when you're wearing this. So it's appropriate for a uh, um, for a very hot day. I'm even thinking uh, that you can make a, a beach wrap uh, for yourself from such type of yarn, even uh, when it's not, uh, not too thin. And I had a chance to visit uh, Alvar Alon Museo in uh, Helsinki because I live in Finland now. I'm not sure if I told you where I moved <laughs> in the last video. I moved to Finland and there is a great Finnish architect, Alvar Aalto, and his museum is in Helsinki and it's his kind of home museum. What do you call it? It's a house where he lived with his family, with his wife. And uh, he designed it himself, he designed the, the project and he filled it with, uh, they uh, filled it with the furniture and pieces of art they created, they uh, planned. So it's, um, I love him, uh, he's one of my favorite like, artists. And uh, it's been my dream for a while to visit his house. It was a special moment for me. So my handmade uh, t-shirt, his handmade or <laughs> made uh, according to his plans, everything around it. So mm, I think I remember, I'll remember this moment for a long time. Okay, what's next? The next item is not knitting, it's sewing. And I'm obsessed. I haven't even used it yet because I need to wash it, but I'm already obsessed. So it's a tote bag. If you look at it just, uh, just like that, you can uh, imagine that it's just a tote bag. As you can see, I made it from my old jeans. I have kind of a project right now to sew all the things, all the clothes I don't wear and that can be made into something else. I'm trying to recycle them. So every week, it's usually Monday, usually on Mondays, I take 
everything out of my closet and I see what fabric, what uh, item matches what, uh, <laughs> what item from my list that I want to sew and I make it. So this week I made this tote bag, <laughs> I even used a back pocket, but if you look inside it's a tote bag especially for four bottles to fit in. And this, I don't know why it makes me so happy. I think it's the best thing. <laughs> I found it on, I found the idea in many places, but this exact uh, pattern with the measurements and everything, I found on, I found on Pinterest and they redirect, redirect you to a YouTube video where you can find everything you need. Uh, a very um, accurate um, instruction to sew it. So I haven't um, brought anything home <laughs> using this bag yet uh, because I need to wash it and to iron it again. But I love it. I I tried to do it uh, very strong because I I am planning to to buy wine using this bag. So it's a, a glass bottle. It's heavy, and there are four of them. So it it needs to be sturdy. So no, oh, I can't. It's cute and very useful at the same time. It makes me happy. I think that's all I wanted to share. I, I'm i sorry it's not much this time, but you know the season is starting. Soon we'll all be sitting and knitting all day long, uh, or as much as we can. I'm already feeling, you know, this autumn wa uh, vibe. I can see that all the YouTubers and TikTokers and uh, Instagram users are already posting uh, autumn kind of content. Harry Potter film marathons, about making apple pies, uh, about drinking uh, pumpkin spice beverages all the time. So, yeah, that actually reminds me that after the last video, some of you went and bought my Spooky Seasons scarf. I talked about it uh, last time we met. And uh, I can see that, you know, in August, maybe one person bought it. But on the 1st of September, <laughs> something happened. You know, it's as if uh, people have been waiting. People have this mental note that the 1st of September is the official start of uh, the spooky season, the autumn season, the cozy season, and they just went and started buying Halloween patterns, uh, autumn patterns, you know, patterns that are made from uh, warm yarn, from wool, not from cotton, not from linen, from wool, from merino, and so on. So that makes me very happy. Thank you for choosing to buy my Spooky Season scarf. I love it too. I'm thinking actually to make it in different colors, to have options to wear it, uh, to wear different things, and to add some photos on Ravelry to make it easier for you to choose uh, this pattern. Um, it's easier, right, when you have options, like I can do this or I can change it a little and it still looks um, nice and it fits me better. So I think I need to do that. And I think I, I need another Halloween scarf, of course. And I'm asking you, if you have already started knitting, when you finish, please add your photos. I'd love to see what you have done. I'd love to see what you ha what yarn you have chosen, what colors you have uh, replaced and what it looks like. It's the most interesting thing, like different approaches do the same thing, right? 
So please let me know. I am spending these days in such a great mood, in such, you know, calmness, if that's a word, peace. I love autumn. It's still, um, there are still quite hot days here in Finland, but you can already feel that it's not for long, you know? So I'm eating a lot of apples. I'm making, actually, I'm allergic to apples and I can only eat them when they are processed, when they are cooked. So I'm making pies, I'm making jam, I'm making everything. There is a kind of a tradition in Finland, people who have uh, gardens, if they have, when they have too many apples, they put a, a box uh, outside of their garden uh, with extra apples they that they don't need. If the apples are in the box, that means you can take it. They Sometimes they write down, like, um, you can take this for free. But usually everybody knows it. So I usually take like five or six apples. They are usually small to make a pie. I leave uh, some kind of a, a sweet instead or something else, what I can, um, what I have at the moment to say thank you and make apples, make pies with these apples. And it makes me kind of happy, um, happier than just having a pie because it's, you know, your neighbor who you don't know, who doesn't know you, just gave you these apples. It's nice. It's kind of a an important thing uh, in our world. And what I wanted to ask you to do is recommend me and all the other uh, people who are watching this. Please recommend some books and films and series that we can all read and watch and enjoy during this season. I mean, I know all the obvious things, all the, I don't know, hocus pocus and uh, so on. But, um, you know, last year I read Ray Bradbury's um, Halloween tree during this season. It's a, it's a quite a short story, but it's, it set the mood, you know, it made my autumn <laughs> better. So if you have some recommendation, especially not the most obvious ones, please tell us. Because I think we all need something to read, to watch, to listen. Maybe that's, uh, if there is a book, there is an audio book, right? We can knit and listen at the same time. I personally would recommend a book I read recently. I, I read it in summer and while I was reading it, I was thinking, oh, that would be so good to read in autumn. And that book is Watching You by a Swedish writer, Arne Dahl. I hope I'm pronouncing the name uh, at least close to, to the original, but, but this is uh, the cover. And uh, it's it's been, uh, it was, I don't know if it still is, but it definitely was a bestseller in Sweden for, for a while. And it's, it's just a detective. Don't expect some, um, something, you know, some story for all times. It's just a detective story. It's just a maybe a little mystery. No, it's there is no magic. There is no fantasy. It's just a detective story, but it's so good. It's so spooky. It's so scary at times. You know, this feeling when you when you are very scared to read, you want to close the book, but you can't because you can't stop it because you want to know how this is possible, how how this ends. And spoiler alert, there are 
four or five more books after this first one. So it's kind of, it ends, no, it stops, but it doesn't end. So be ready for that. But it's very good, you know, to, it's a, a I wouldn't say it's a classic detective story, but it makes you feel maybe some of the same, some of the similar feelings, some of the similar emotions, like the classic detectives do. You could read it near the fire, at your um, country house, you know, after walking in a forest for two hours and being cold. It's nice. Totally recommend. So, I am waiting for the recommendations from you. Please share. And I hope to see you soon next time. Thank you for being with me today. And good luck. Bye.